Welcome back. Disgraced FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried arrested in the Bahamas last night, all happening hours before he was set to testify before the House Financial Services Committee today. The New York Times is reporting that he's facing several charges, including wire fraud, securities fraud, money laundering. The SEC announced that they will be charging Samuel Bankman-Fried as well with defrauding investors. Prior to the arrest, SBF hired uh, Ghislaine Maxwell's defense attorney, Mark Cohen. Joining me right now is Georgia Congressman and member of the House Financial Services Committee, Barry Loudermilk. Uh, Congressman, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for being here. What is your reaction to this? You were about to interview him under oath in your committee today. Where does that stand? Well, Maria, good morning. I, I, this is something that is the timing is just unbelievable. Hours before he was actually going to make an appearance before a congressional committee, he is arrested, which right now uh, I doubt seriously that his attorneys are going to let him testify at all. And uh, I'm sure he is. Uh, he was lawyered up before. He's probably even more lawyered up now. And it's, it's quite disappointing for those of us on the committee because there was a lot of information that we need uh, to go forward because of the significant interaction he had with Congress. Uh, he was in the halls of Congress lobbying, believe it or not, for a uh, crypto regulatory bill that his company never would have been able to comply with. And so there was a lot of information that we need uh, that we're probably not going to get at this point. Well, what did you want to know? Tell me about some of the questions you were going to ask now as you see these charges from the SEC, defrauding investors, wire fraud, uh, money laundering. Uh, what were your questions uh, situated around? Well, a lot of my questions are going to be based off the testimony that we would see receive from John Ray this morning, which that part of the uh, uh, hearing is going to continue. But especially from the testimony, the written testimony that he had presented, how in the world uh, did you run a company that you're supposed to be this self-proclaimed genius that you don't even have proper accounting of the your, your funds and your assets? And another question I wanted to get to is, where was the SEC during all of this? How come the SEC hadn't picked up up on it if this was such blatant violations of, uh, you know, financial regulations. Were they asleep at yeah. the wheel? What was going on with the SEC during all this? Are they mm -hmm. too focused on woke policies against uh, companies in the United States that they're not actually doing their job? Well, that's a very good question. So the hearing today will now only feature the current CEO of FTX, John Ray. He plans to tell the committee that he's never seen, quote, such an utter failure of corporate controls at every level of an organization, Congressman. What are you expecting to ask John Ray, and how will this further your investigation? Well, uh, fortunately, John Ray has been very cooperative. And so we want to dig a little deeper into how did all of this happen? What has he found out so far? And more importantly, what are the chances that the investors will ever see any of their money back? I, you know, they're uh, under bankruptcy. They're going to go for the creditors first to make sure that they're made whole or partially whole. But what about those investors? What about the customers? Is there any yeah. chance that they're going to see any of this money? And, you know, how is he going to proceed with... Uh, finding out what really happened with the billions of dollars that suddenly disappeared in the amount of about 10 days. Yeah, it's a great question. And earlier, Dagan mentioned some of the other uh, big blow up stories that we've covered. Dagan, if I remember correctly, you mentioned Tyco, you, me you mentioned uh, others, Enron. And at the end of the day, it's the equity investor typically holding the bag. I don't know if yeah. you're going to recover any of that money. Jump in here, Dagan. Uh, right. The, a lot of these frauds were exposed uh, by prosecutors in very interesting ways. With Tyco, it was originally Robert Morgenthau, the Manhattan District Attorney, who focused on, um, I believe it was like uh, tax fraud uh, at, at Tyco at, at, by the CEO. I digress. But Congressman... The, there was no regulation, for the most part, of crypto because regulators, um, you know, lawmakers, politicians, uh, they didn't want to end the party, just like with TikTok. You know, the kiddos are having a blast trading crypto, getting rich, and or adults. You know, TikTok, nobody wants to stop that, the festivities there. 
but it could have and should have been regulated and stopped. The Federal Trade Commission, in fact, um, deals with consumer fraud. You cannot go out and say that, say, a can of paint covers 400 feet and only covers 200 feet. So I think that everybody in Washington, and correct me if I'm wrong, needs to take a long look in the mirror and ask themselves why there was, there was uh, you didn't step up to stop this. Gambling is regulated in this country, but not this. This all, crypto was treated as, and still, quite frankly, like a collectible, like baseball cards and beanie babe, digital beanie babies. I keep saying this over and over again, but that's why it was lightly regulated, if not regulated at all. So everybody keeps wondering why this fraud happened. Well, y'all are part of the problem. Well, this is something that we have been looking at is what level of regulation do we need in crypto now? To be clear, there's, there was uh, laws and regulations in place or he wouldn't be indicted at this point or charged with criminal offenses. But there being an exchange, there is the responsibility of the Securities Exchange Commission is yeah. that there are regulations being in an exchange there that those, uh, obviously the oversight and the investigation of SEC was not there and was not adequate. And on the Republican side, we've been looking at what is the right regulation that we should be putting into crypto, and more importantly, which agency uh, yeah. should be regulating crypto. And we run into this, this situation where you're going to see this now. There'll be turf battles over which yeah. uh, entity w is going to jump in and try to regulate crypto. So we oh, do yeah. have to be on the front end of this. Oh, yeah. No, we've been reporting that there's a whole host of agencies that want the job of overseeing. You've got the <laughs> CFTC, you've got the SEC. There's going to be a whole host of regulation when, when uh, this is all organized. I, I get that. But real quick, Congressman, before you go, uh, we also are hearing so much about the Twitter files and about, you know, the management at Twitter amplifying lies, suppressing truth. The Journal this morning is reporting that the Republicans are intensifying their calls for a Twitter investigation. Uh, they revealed now this part five that staffers and top executives at the company pushed for former President Trump to be banned, even though they found no policy violations in, in the president's tweets. Congressman, what do you want to see here? Oh, I want to see a full investigation because this is something we have all, you know, and known that was going on, but you never had the proof. And now with uh, Elon Musk at the helm, he is uh, providing this information that's going forward. What's interesting, Maria, is your network's the only one that's reporting this uh, with any significance. It's being basically ignored by the other networks, and this is uh, groundbreaking. I mean, it's earth-shattering information uh, that should concern every American, regardless of which side of the aisle you're sitting on. And so yeah. this is, as we gain more data, more information, we need to make sure that we move appropriately to ensure freedom of speech is applied to everyone equally. That's right. Well, you're right. And, Congressman, I've been saying the last few days this company has been parading around as some kind of a digital town square where there's lots of diverse conversation happening. But, in fact, <laughs> all it has been is another cog in the wheel for the Democrat machine. That is all this company Absolutely. has been, another cog in the wheel for the Democrat machine. Congressman, we're going to be watching this, and we want to watch your investigation and leadership on this issue. Barry Loudermilk, good to see you this morning, sir. Thank you.